Why are so many people overwhelmed with clutter? Disorganization is causing shame, suffering, friendships, time, money. People just like you wondering where and how to create an organized lifestyle. This podcast offers expert tips and solutions for your clutter obstacles. My name is Rachel CV, and this is the Organized Podcast. Hey, collectors, welcome to the Organized Podcast. I'm very excited to have Rachel Arbuckle from 2000 Paces here to discuss photo organizing. And I would love her to introduce herself. Uh, You've got such a great story. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Rachel. Um, It's so strange to say my own name. I love it. We're kindred spirits. Um, So hi uh, uh, to you, of course, and and all of your listeners. Rachel Arbuckle. Um, I am the founder of 2000 Paces Photo Organizing. Um, 2000 Paces, actually, um, in uh, um, ancient times or biblical times, represented a day's journey. And so we're trying to capture our client's journey. That's where that name comes from. Um, And my journey was uh, back in 2014, there was a very fierce fire that, um, you know, kind of destroyed many homes in um, my community and throughout San Diego County. And, you know, living in Southern California, it's not uncommon to have fires and I've been evacuated many times, but this one was particularly um, intense and unique in that uh, it started very close to our home and it went on for, I think we were evacuated for six or seven days, which is really not normal. Um, and when we were at the bottom of the hill, I was working, you know, a corporate job doing the traditional, you know, nine to five kind of thing um, with no real goal or plan to start a company at that time. Um, but when we were looking up at the fire, I looked at my husband and said, I am so, I mean, I, I was filled with anxiety um, and guilt that my photos were all over the place, right? Whether they were in scrapbooks and envelopes and albums or on thumb drives and CDs or framed on the wall, they were throughout the entire house. And um, I said, you know, if our photos survive, we need to figure something out because I don't want to feel this way ever again. Um, so our, you know, we had some smoke damage, but beyond that, uh, everything survived. Um, and I started to look for a solution and at that time did not find a solution that I thought our photos deserved. And I think our photos deserve to be well taken care of and, and preserved for future generations. Um, so anyway, I created a solution and and uh, that's kind of the story. Wow, that's, that's uh, devastating. But, you know, a lot of people uh, feel exactly the same way I do. I work with people every day. I mean, photos are right along the line of money, valuables. Whenever I do a valuable recovery job, um, it's, it's automatic that I save all the photos. I mean, to me, that's just as precious as finding a diamond ring. Um, yeah. Yeah. And people are like that, you know, like, can you just recover all of the family photos? And um, people are very sentimental about their their photos. But we're all, including myself, kind of disorganized uh, about our photos. You know, it's like, what do you do with them? I mean, I started out, you know, snapping photos of my son when he was little and then I mean, it just, you know, it's everywhere and thumb drives and discs and, you know, cards from Disneyland. And it's like, you name it, you get these photos and these memories. And um, just the thought of losing them is like, ah, I don't want to lose that stuff. So um, what, what kind of people contact you? Do they just have like a box of photos? Like someone like me, like, I think I have about one clear bin of loose photos, there might be some albums. Sure. Um, is that kind of what you get? Or do you get more than that? Or how do people deliver these things to you? Yeah, you know, I, I it's it really varies tremendously. And I always share that what you have in your inventory and what it's gonna take for us to organize it is really as unique as the journey that created the, the stuff. Right. Um, So we've had people and we work with clients all over the country. So although we're in San Diego, about 50 percent of our clients are in San Diego, Orange County, L.A. um, And another 50 percent are all over the country, uh, uh, which is really an honor 
to, to have that. So we have people that bring by, you know, we've had people that just say, you know, I've just got this, this little shoe box of older photos. I've got a memorial coming up or, um, you know, a high school graduation or something. And we just want to get that done. Um, we might have people that say, you know, I have a couple Apple libraries, you know, my iPhone, I've got some photos and a couple of thumb drives and maybe an old laptop. Um, and then we've had people bring in, we had one client bring in 17 suitcases, full size suitcases of photos. Okay. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we got boxes and boxes of, of photos that were kind of, some of them were organized, uh, you know, there was an attempt to organize and, and then some of them are just kind of thrown in boxes. Um, and that's everything from the photos to the uh, videos, because we do video conversion as well, um, and all the digital stuff. Um, it's one thing that that I'm really proud of that we provide is there are, um, and there's a lot of really great photo organizers out there. Many of them are close friends of mine. It's a, it's a great community to be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but many do provide a single service, and we really want to provide a, a plethora of services. So print organizing, digital organizing, digitizing, photo books, video conversion. Um, so anyway, what people bring in, it, it really does vary tremendously. Yes. And, and that's interesting because I, I'm, uh, both of us, I know are in NAPO, the National Association of Professional Organizers. And so some of my colleagues, I believe organize photos, but because I work with people that have so many photos, um, I would always, you know, hope that there'd be a service like yours that could handle that, you know, just not one poor soul going through a million photos because my clients are more along the 17 suitcases <laughs> full of photos. Right. So yeah. So I go, I don't know where to take them. And I I've probably a hundred times a year tell people, I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I go, I think Costco does. I don't know, but like, it's, it's very vague. And I never think of like, um, you know, just one individual just sifting through all of this stuff that I wouldn't place on anyone. And so it's <laughs> nice to have a company and a resource like yours. Um, and, and so do people, I mean, I guess I thought about this a little and do people like their photographs, like chronological, is that like the most common method? Yeah. So that's a great question. It's it's interesting because that's that is one of the big challenges is uh, how do I organize my photos? You know, uh, just just the the overwhelm when we look at all the stuff and and you see this with with your clients. You know, when you go into their home and they have all the stuff. Well, photos and videos and memorabilia is the same thing. And it's the question of where do I start and then what what do I do? How do I organize this? And what I have found is a number of. Um, of our clients before they come to us have, you know, made an attempt at organizing. Um, and what they've done is separated it by person or by event, right? So um, we had a client that has four adult children and she separated it by each child mm -hmm. um, where you can see where the problem is that the first child, you can separate that very easily. But then when you move to the child two, three, and four, it's very rare you're gonna get that child by him or herself. So how do you decide which child gets what photos, right? And that happens when we've got somebody who maybe has lost an, a parent and there's an estate and they have to decide who's gonna get what. Um, and what I wanna share is everybody can get all of the photos in a digital format and you can print them if you organize them chronologically. So um, it really makes sense now to organize chronologically. That's the way we live our lives, right? So that's how we think about things. Mm -hmm. But what's nice is now in the digital age, um, I'll, I'll compare it to like a file cabinet, right? The old file cabinets that we used to use that some of us still like to use and you pull out the big metal drawer and, and maybe the drawer says 1990s, right? And then each folder is 1991, 1992. And within that, you've got January, February, right? That's kind of, how many of us think, because that's how we grew up with that, with that organizational system. But with the digital age and keywords and AI and all this cool stuff, what I want clients to do is organize it chronologically so you can see your story as it actually happened. But then let's add keywords and let's tag people. Let's do facial recognition, because what I want is that photo you want to fly right out of the cabinet. 
So if your son, when he re he's ready to graduate from high school, and that's how, how long do we have till he graduates? Two years. <laughs> Two years. So it's going to happen, right? Like that. I'm sure you've heard oh, it. I know. And, you know, you're going to want to put together a, a cool photo book for him or a video slideshow or some photos to put up for a party. How great would it be if you could just type his name and type birthdays or professional school um, and all those photos just magically show up on your computer? Yeah, no, that would be wonderful. I hadn't yeah. even uh, thought about all of those kind of search functions. And so you add that in as part of your service? Yeah, I mean, our service is customizable. Um, so it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. But the ideal result would be we've removed all the duplicates. We've cleaned up all the stuff like the cat memes and the, you know, the photo of the shoe and the accidental screenshot and the picture of the receipt, right? Uh, I'm sure you don't have any of those on your phone though, Rachel. Oh no, I absolutely <laughs> do. I, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Um, it's hard, especially with work, you know, do I need all these before and afters? My phone is overloaded with before and afters that I never right. refer to. Yeah. And sprinkled in are my dogs. Um, you know, those terrible photos, you know, some selfies, lots of memes. Um, yeah, that's right. We love the memes, right? We love the memes. <laughs> yeah. But wouldn't okay. it be nice if you could focus specifically on the photos you want, right? I, I can't tell you how many times I see people just in the grocery store looking through their phone or at an event and they're, oh, let me show you this photo of, you know, X, Y, and Z. And it takes forever. It takes forever. They're, they're scrolling. Oh, it happens all the time. Hold on just a second. Let me go back to my messages who sent it to me. And it's right. like, oh, yeah. And they never find it. They're like, I swear it was really cute of my dog. Right. And um, yeah. Okay. And so what about people who, so like thumb drives, people can just mail those in and you just, I mean, it's everything. CD. Right. It's, wow. It really is everything. It's kind of based on what you're trying to accomplish. But the ideal is to get everything in one place and, and, and you know, aggregate it together and then create a, a system of organization. So for clients that want to drive here, of course, we welcome them. We have brick and mortar and I have a whole team of people and we love when people come into the office and visit. Um, and for the people that are afar, uh, will often ship stuff. We've actually had clients, I had a client on the East Coast that actually had somebody drive his photos out here to San Diego because he didn't want to ship them. Um, we've gone to pick photos up. I also, um, on occasion, will work remotely. So I've flown out to Kentucky, um, Washington, D.C., a couple other places to work with clients directly. But yes, in general, um, they, they ship their items to us. We do a full inventory. We document everything. And then we dive in um, on, on the project to get it organized. That's so exciting. I, yeah, fun. I, this is such a great need for people. I mean, and, and it's such a niche, I have to tell you, because when we spoke earlier and you said, oh, well, I can give you some training. Yeah. I said, no way. Right. Um, <laughs> because it's so overwhelming and I deal with overwhelming. Um, but this, yeah. the, the micro sorting of photographs, I mean, that is a real skill yeah. and, and there's not that available out there, especially with the detail that you're putting in there. And so yeah. truly, truly excited to share your services because I really think it's a need. Um, even for someone like me that just has a small amount of photos, not a huge family. I mean, yeah. while we're talking, I'm thinking like, oh, should I do something for Shane right. for his, you know, uh, yeah. and um, yeah, it's such a nice thing to do for family and to share and uh, precious. Um, so how do people find you, your 2000 paces, photo right. organizing, um, what is your web address? Yeah. And um, let me give you that. But can I make one comment on something you said? Yeah. Um, I know that uh, I worked with a lot of residential organizers. Um, in fact, I was on a discussion panel last week um, and, and invite them to the office and things like that. And it, you know, I we don't organize closets or kitchens or, you know, garages. We're, we're not going to we're not going to. That's not our our area of expertise. But the photos, it really, it's interesting. Some people say, wow, you created an entire business just on photos. But I think what's one thing that you you mentioned earlier is 
you know, we, we pay for auto insurance. We pay for insurance for our home, our jewelry, our art. But you can't insure your photos because guess what? They're not replaceable. So you can't insure them because they can't be replaced. Um, and so the best way to insure them, if you will, is, is to make sure that they're, they're backed up and that they're preserved so that if a fire or a flood um, or some other tragedy, I mean, we've had everything from, um, uh, you know, people have lost photos because of natural disasters like fire, floods, earthquakes, to my water heater burst and my photos were near there or I had a leak in plumbing or, you know, the kids got in there. Um, or I moved and we've heard stories of, of photos disappearing through a move, you know, really scary stuff. And so um, I think it's I think it's OK. Some people, I think, um, feel some embarrassment or guilt. And I'm sure you come across that with many of your clients. You know, it's gosh, I really need some professional help here, but I'm embarrassed for you to see my home or see anything. And so it's the same with photos. You know, sometimes people. Um, get really hesitant about it. But our goal is to ensure that your photos are protected and safe. And that's ultimately what's important. So um, that, that's interesting that you say that. And it's not that I have anything sketchy on my phone. But if you were to be like, yeah, just send over your phone right now, I yeah. think there would be a slight hesitation. And so what is that? What is that all about? Is yeah, it well, it's exposure? It's what's that being exposed? Yeah, you know, I think our photos are so intimate, um, and and I don't mean that <laughs> they're they're so precious and they're so special to us. I mean, you know, the photos of our children growing up, taking their first step. Um, you know, the photo of our parents as they're aging. You know, and 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 holding on to those memories before we lose them. These are um, remarkably important moments in life when you look back at them and when you aggregate them all together and look at this story and this journey, um, you know, it kind of explains who we are today and how we became who we are today and, um, good, bad, or indifferent. It, it's a big part of our lives. And so allowing somebody sort of, um, you know, the way I look at it is our clients are giving us a backstage pass to the story of their lives. Um, and it's always an honor. It's why we provide free phone consultations ahead of time. I want you to know who we are. It's why when photos come into the office, we have privacy agreements and NDAs signed by all of our team. Um, nobody works remotely so that everything that comes in the office stays in the office. Um, and we've got processes and procedures to um, deal with uh, maybe some uncomfortable photos. Um, uh, and we we look at it, although we we respect the story behind it. We're very passionate about our clients' memories. We do provide a business service. And so we're going to respect the photos that each person has. And we kind of approach it, okay, this is a birthday. We're going to call it a birthday. This is a graduation. We're going to call it a graduation. And we don't pass judgment um, on, on the quality of the photos or what you look like. Uh, what we want to do is preserve them for you. And so that's why I encourage people, if you don't want to do it yourself and you want to hire an expert, um, I can understand and appreciate the discomfort, but work with somebody that will have a conversation with you. Uh, work with somebody that's open to talking about um, the project and keeping you in the loop if you want to be. Um, and most importantly, it's actually getting them protected and preserved. Um, and if it means, you know, a little discomfort, I think it's worth it in the long run because the feeling I had during that time when I thought I was going to lose my photos is um, it was it was just so profound. Um, and I never wanted to feel that way again because the, the fear and anxiety of losing those photos, um, I would have paid any amount of money and hired anybody in that moment to protect our memories. Yeah. Well, thanks for explaining that because it does feel intimate and... Um... I don't know. It's just, it is such a personal thing. And I guess I never even realized until we had this discussion that I would even have a little hesitation, but the idea of, of having some sort of final format of all my photos, I mean, that's exciting. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I definitely don't want to do it myself. And there's a lot of people that have this shame and guilt. And I, I don't know if it's a dad thing, but a lot of mothers 
that I work with and grandmothers, they're like, oh, I should have done all these, you know, elaborate things. There's a lot of guilt, like, oh, like, don't judge them for just having boxes of photos, because I think people do want to cherish them. You know, Absolutely. I don't know how. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Rachel. And it's, you know, I can't tell you, um, and, and we do have male clients and, and many of them are very passionate about the photos and, and, and most of them are when they get it. But you're absolutely right. As women um, and moms and daughters and sisters and mothers, um, there is a tremendous amount of guilt. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many moms, adult moms, or uh, obviously they're adults. I hope they're adults. <laughs> um, I meant mothers of adult children. Um, you know, will come in and say, gosh, I, I really want to show my kids um, what, or even teenagers, I want to show my kids what a wonderful childhood they had. I don't know if they all remember that. And I don't know if they remember all the wonderful birthday parties I threw or all the times we went to the zoo or, you know, all the fun times we had. And I really want to show that to them. And, um, oh gosh, I feel so bad that I did a, a scrapbook for my first child. But by the time I got to my third child, I was exhausted. And I, I feel so guilty about it. It's, it's really amazing. And it was kind of comforting for me to know that it's not just me that felt this guilt and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, so it's truly an honor if I can help those clients. Let's, you know, let's let go of that. Let's kind of deal with some of that. Let's remind you as well as a mom of all the things that you did. And, and even as an adult child, I think sometimes it's good for us to be reminded of all the wonderful things that our parents did for us too. Um, so yeah. Wow. Such an interesting conversation. And, and I just can't think of anyone that can't relate with this subject. You know, I, yeah. everybody thinks of their photos as precious. Um, you know, I think it's pretty rare to have somebody that doesn't. Yeah. Um, so um, I'd love to share how people can reach you. Um, and then if you'd be kind enough to share, you know, three basic tips on photo organizing, I'm sure we'd all love to, to write those down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, our website is 2000paces.com. Let's see if you can, 2000 paces, it's spelled out right behind me. Um, you know, you can call us or you can go on the website, check out, we have before and after photos and things like that. And there's also a button at the top for um, a free consultation. And I think Rachel, you were gonna put that on your website as well. Um, because I do recognize there's hesitancy. Let's talk about your project. Um, and if it's not a good fit, uh, that's okay. I'll just give you some suggestions on what you can do for your own project. But um, you can just schedule a time right there uh, on our website. Um, and then, of course, we're on social and things like that as well. Um, okay, three tips. Um, so tip one is consolidate. Um, consolidating is absolutely the first place to start. What do I mean by that? It means go through your house or your storage, your attic, your basement. And if you're able to find an area where you can put all of your um, photo and video assets. So that could be things like, um, that could be your photo albums and scrapbooks, uh, boxes of you know loose photos, all the thumb drives and CDs, you know, your kids will play sports or you'll go to an event. Maybe you go skydiving, right? And they give you a CD or they give you the thumb drive. You know what I mean? And you just throw it in the junk drawer um, and you say, I'm going to deal with it someday. Um, uh, the videotapes that you can't watch anymore because the cameras and technology is outdated. So you want to go around the house and I recommend you have a bin um, maybe that you have sitting there. So as you're going through and cleaning things up, um, or if you need a lot bigger area, if you have a dining room table or a corner, somewhere you can consolidate everything. And when you do that, it really gives you an idea. I know that can sound very overwhelming, but if you imagine, if you say, you know what, I'm just going to grab a couple photo albums and start there. And let's say you got them out and you organize them and you put them in chronological order. And then you go to grab another box and that box intertwines with those photos well, now you're kind of going back to square one. Yeah. Right? It's it's kind of like when you imagine um, uh, going in to organize your kitchen or your garage. You don't just open one cabinet and say, let's organize this. You take everything out. You review what you have and figure out what you need to purge, what you need to keep. And you put it back in. It's the same with photos. 
So anyway, consolidate is absolutely number one, take an inventory of what you have. Okay. Okay. Number two, I'm going to suggest is backup. Um, now that sounds like something you would do at the end of the process. And we do that at the end of the process. When we're done, we always recommend you have your photos in three places um, digitally. Okay. But I'm going to suggest um, that if you are able to, if you don't hire an expert to work with uh, who will do this for you, I recommend getting all your digital assets backed up, even if you're not ready to start organizing them. So that means take all those CDs and DVDs and transfer them to an external hard drive. All the thumb drives, the memory cards, the old laptops, the external drives, try and as, so that's part of that consolidating, but you're consolidating it onto one external drive. Um, so at the very least, and then that external drive ideally should be backed up online because it's great to have an external drive backup, but what if it crashes? Yeah. What if there's a natural disaster? Um, uh, what if it falls down uh, and falls on the ground and breaks? So backing it up online as well. So even if, again, you're not ready to organize, having that backup and having everything consolidated is great. Um, and then the third recommendation I was going to give is to put your photos in chronological order. Um, but because we already talked about that, I'll go ahead and throw in a bonus. <laughs> so chronological order um, we talked about is, is how you live your lives and it gives you the opportunity to tag in keyword um, things so you can find them, right? But you still have the chronology so everybody can share in the photos. But um, if you're organizing your photos yourself, what I want to suggest, yeah, I know, panic, panic. <laughs> it's okay, I'm here if you need help. But if you're doing it yourself, I, what I find is once you get started, oftentimes, so if you imagine you're going through, you know, this set of print photos, well, when you see the exact duplicates, right, we're going to get rid of them. You know that. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. But when you come across a set of photos and you're trying to decide where it goes and you don't know the year, right, oftentimes people will sit down and just become paralyzed, or spend hours reaching out to their cousin and their aunt and their mom and say, hey, do you remember when this event happened? And before you know it, you've spent hours and you've gotten this much, you know, 100 photos done. So what I recommend is to use a review later. So the third suggestion is review later. And what that means is when you're going through to organize photos and sort through them, if you don't have a year, for example, you want to put them in, I would recommend you put them in a decade. But if you don't even have that, put them to the side. It's okay if you don't have an answer um, for a particular set of photos. Uh, it's okay to put them to the side. That's actually what we do here when we come across some photos that just don't have any rhyme or reason. Um, so it's going to save you a lot of time and you're going to realize that you've accomplished something um, if you do that. I'm so motivated. Good. Really good. Yeah. Lots oh gosh, more tips. Everyone oh. is their brains are going like mine. I mean, my notebook is all full. Um, and then I remembered that I have an entire Dropbox <laughs> where yeah. I just dumped because I thought, well, it's in the cloud, so yeah. it's safe. Yeah. And I pay like I don't know, a hundred something dollars a year just to like host this random storage of photos. Right. Right. Oh, wow. This is like a confessional here. It's great. Um, well, and can you imagine how much money you could save? You know, it, it is an initial investment to work with any expert, you know, in any field. And that includes photo organizing. But the money that you're spending on Dropbox and your Apple library and, you know, all these different things, if it was all consolidated in one place and organized, well, now you're not just backing it up, but you're using it and you're enjoying the photos. And that's really a better, I think, way to spend your money. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, well, gosh, thank you so much for those tips. I love that review later. That yes. makes me feel good because that happens to me a lot. It's like, well, when, who was this and when did we take? Yeah. And you could just get stopped. Um, so that allows you to just keep moving along. Um, right. which is fun. And, um, gosh, well, I will definitely have your information in the comment section here. And uh, encouraging people to contact you for a free consultation. 
I'll have that link on all my social media and on my website. And um, I'm just really happy to have you on the Organized podcast. It's been so much fun. Thank you. Well, I know, I know that you, um, you know, your clients and your listeners have many, many facets of organization to deal with. And, and it's a lot, just that in and of itself can feel overwhelming. Um, so this is, you know, I recognize one part of that, but I, you know, I think most people would agree that it's a really important part because those are our memories and our life stories. So it's, it's an honor, Rachel, to be able to share um, some tips and, uh, and I hope, you know, I encourage people to just take the first step start gathering your stuff and, uh, and, and just kind of start working on it one box at a time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rachel. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Horde Ganize podcast. Please make sure you're subscribed and join our Horde Ganize podcast Facebook page and get additional tips and challenges.